Allison Frost's day job is producing and occasionally hosting Think Out Loud on OPV. <laughs> also, pledge drives. <laughs> and, and, and so sorry about that, but don't apologize for that. <laughs> Previous identities at OPV include managing editor of news and Oregon considered host. Way back, she worked at KLCC in Eugene, ran a K-Blue Light Station in Fresno, California, and spent way too much time as a bookseller at Barnes & Noble. But hey, books right? Yes. More recently, she studied dangerous writing with Thomas Van Bauer and storytelling structure with Jennifer Lau. She writes poems from time to time and works in bits and starts on a memoir about growing up in the new age cult. She lives in Portland with her husband and two children, and thank goodness she does. Please welcome Allison Frost. Thank you. So the name of this New Age cult uh, was Church Universal and Triumph, and still is, actually. It still exists. Uh, the leader's name was Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Um, this short excerpt is from a chapter called Looking for Amethysts. It's set in Southern California in 1978. And the only other thing I think you should know uh, before hearing this is that uh, before this is the scene, it, my parents were divorced a couple of years before, and I, me and my brother lived with my mom. And it's been a very long time since I've seen my dad. These were the days of sole maternal custody and pay phones. <laughs> I am nine. My brother Austin is five. He's sleeping in the back seat. I'm up front with mom. We're in our yellow Toyota Corolla hatchback with the windows rolled all the way down. It's warm, but not too warm. You can taste the ocean in the air. We're on a mission to find mom's little tan leather pouch she had her special amethysts in. Actually, all amethysts are special because they anchor the energy of the violet flame. Violet flame decrees are mom's favorite and violet is her favorite color color of transmutation. I can say that word, no problem. Mom says amethysts have a little bit of the violet flame right inside them. Saint Germain is the ascended master in charge of the violet flame. He also wrote one of the bumper stickers we have on our car. It says, abortion is first degree murder of God. <laughs> our other bumper sticker says, souls of great light are waiting to be born. Have one, mother. Mother is our leader, Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Everyone calls her mother, even mom. Let's do some more Lord Michaels, I say to mom. Great idea, she says. She turns and smiles at me. We always know how to start together. Lord Michael before, Lord Michael behind, Lord Michael to the left, Lord Michael to the right, Lord Michael above, Lord Michael below, Lord Michael, Lord Michael, wherever we go. <laughs> We have to decree extra loud because of the loud air from the windows. She takes one hand off the steering wheel to move the rearview mirror so she can check on Austin. Mom's brown curly hair is blowing all around her face. My dad doesn't have much hair on his head, but he does have a big beard. I try not to think of my dad because I miss him. When I decree, I'm only thinking of the decrees. We do our Lord Michaels in the car for protection but there are lots of other decrees for all sorts of other things. Now mom is saying a decree too fast for me to hear. I listen hard through the car noise, the engine, and the loud air. I lean over to her side to hear her better. It's Beloved Cyclopeia, the green flame. Beloved Cyclopeia helps you find things. Beloved Cyclopeia, beholder of perfection, release to us thy divine direction. Mom pulls our car over to the side of the road, next to the ice plants. The window air gets softer, and I can hear the gravel crunch under our tires. This is where she thinks she might have lost the pouch. I don't ask her how it fell out of the car, or when we were even here before. I wait till she turns the car off, like I'm supposed to, before I unclick my seatbelt. She opens her door. I open my door. We go around to the front of our yellow Toyota. Cars go boom past us. Mom takes my hand. Her hand is smooth and warm like the air. Don't just look for the pouch, she tells me. Be sure to look for the stones, too. They might have fallen out. Our brown eyes lock before she lets go of my hand and points me to where she wants me to look. 
closer to the ice plants. I'm going to find them. I shout over my shoulder back at her. I'm committed to the mission. We're a team. I look at the dark asphalt. I look in the gravel. I look all over, but I don't see anything except road and gravel. I'm failing the mission. I look over at my mom. She's looking closer to the road. She has one hand cupped over her ear, probably so she can hear herself decree. Maybe beloved Cyclopea could help me. I remember the first verse for sure. I am, I am, beholding all my nice single as I call. Raise me now and set me free, thy holy image now to be. I look back down the road, five feet ahead of me, ten. But no couch, no amethysts. Seems like a regular old road, nothing special. I look back up to tell mom that, but right then, everything goes dark. When I open my eyes, I see blue. It's the sky. I'm laying in the ice plants. Our yellow Toyota Corolla hatchback is way far away. And there's other cars over there, too. How did I get way over here in the ice plants? I roll over to try to get up. Everything seems very slow. I can feel my knees crunching the ice plants. Kind of a creepy but cool sound. My hands only crunch them a little bit. All of a sudden, I feel wet and chilly. I think I hear mom calling me, but I can't see her. It's weird. And now there are other people getting out of cars, walking in big, funny steps on the ice plants towards me. We're never going to find the amethyst now, I remember thinking. At the hospital, a nurse told me that a drunk driver hit our yellow Toyota from behind, and then our yellow Toyota hit us. That's how mom landed in the road and got a whole bunch of gravel embedded in her skin and broke bones in her arm and shoulder. That's how she got her thick, ropey purple scar. I was lucky to get thrown into the ice plants. I just got a chipped front tooth. Austin didn't get hurt at all. The nurse said that it was a miracle since he was in the back seat. Mom said later, luck and miracles didn't have anything to do with it. She said me and Austin just had different karma. That she got hurt because she had bad karma to balance. I wondered what she could have done to deserve that much bad karma. Must have been from a past life. 